Hi, this is question 8 from the AQA Mechanics 1 January 2012 exam paper. For the first part of this video, I'd like you to try the question out yourself. So if you'd like to pause the video now and give this question a go. Okay, well done if you managed to have a go. I'm now going to give uh, um, some hints as to how you can go about answering this question. We've got a girl who stands at the edge of a key and sees a tin can flowing in the water. The water level is 5 meters below the top of the key and the can is at a horizontal distance 10 meters away from the key. The girl decides to throw a stone at the can. She throws the stone from a height of 1 meters above the top of the key. The initial velocity of the stone is 8 meters per second at an angle alpha below the horizontal so that the initial velocity of the stone is directed at the can as shown in the diagram. We assume that the stone is a particle and that it experiences no air resistance as it moves. So this means that we can treat it like a projectile. For part A we need to find alpha. Now um, alpha is um, where the girl is, uh, sorry, the, the girl is aiming at the tin can and alpha is the angle below the horizontal where she's aiming. So because we know that she's six meters um, above the tin can and she's eight meters horizontally away from the kin, tin can, we should be able to use that information to work out what alpha is. Part B says find the time that it takes for the stone to reach the level of the water. So we just want to want to look at um, everything vertically. So we know that um, the, proje the projectile will experience gravity, um, and we know that um, we know the angle that it's being thrown at, and we know the speed. So we should be able to use that to work out the vertical velocity, um, and we also know the distance um, that it needs to travel vertically. Um, so we should be able to use mm -hmm. that information to find the time. Part C says find the distance between the stone and the can when the stone hits the water. So what we want to do first of all is decide how far it travels horizontally. Now remember, horizontally um, speed is equal to, sorry, the horizontal speed is equal to distance over time. So we can work out the horizontal speed we know how long it's taken because we worked that out in part B so we should be able to work out the distance that it's travelled and once we know the distance that it's travelled we can work out how far it is away from the can. Okay those are my hints if you'd like to pause the video now and see if you can have a go at answering um, this, this question. Okay, well done if you managed to have a go at that. We're now going to go over the full solution um, to this question. So starting with part A, um, we need to find alpha. Now I'm going to draw a quick diagram. Um, <coughs> and we're going to um, show, or we're going to work out, uh, let's do that. The angle that it's thrown at. Okay, so <coughs> now we're trying to work out this angle here, um, alpha, and that's the same as this angle here. So in my diagram, um, it's going to be the same as this angle here, which is alpha. Yeah, and that's because this is on um, uh, this is an alternate angle to this one here, so they're the same as each other. This here is going to be 5 meters, and this here is going to be 10 meters. And right now, hopefully, you're screaming at the screen at my deliberate error. Um, this here is 5 meters, but actually, the um, the height above um, the water level is actually going to be 6 meters. Um, so I need to change that there to 6 meters. So we've got 6 meters and 10 meters. Um, so for part A. we know that the tan of this angle here, tan alpha, 
is going to be equal to and it's the opposite divided by the adjacent so it's six tenths or, or three fifths okay and um, so that tells us that um, alpha is going to be the inverse term of three fifths uh, which works out to be 30 and I'm going to write it as 30.96 degrees okay so that's part A, that's alpha, so that's the angle below the horizontal that this um, girl is, is, is aiming her stone at okay uh, part B and um, I'm just going to let's just get rid of some of this stick it in the corner over there just so I've got plenty of room to work in okay for part B we want to find the time that it takes for the stone to reach the level of the water okay so I'm just going to look at this vertically so um, I know the distance vertically I know the um, well I can work out the initial velocity vertically um, and I know the um, acceleration is going to be gravity, the acceleration due to gravity. So I should have enough information there to work this out. Now I'm just going to draw a um, velocity um, triangle. Uh, let's have a red one here. Okay, so um, this is going to look like this. So the angle that it's going to be thrown at okay the angle that it's going to be thrown at is alpha which we worked out to be 30.96 um, and we've got a speed of 8 meters per second so that's going to be 8 meters per second in this direction here okay so that means that this here is going to be uh, well this is the um, sorry this here is what we what we need so that's going to be 8 sine 30.96 and while we're at it I'm just going to say that this here is going to, going to be 8 cos 30.96 yeah so I've just got this using trigonometry okay so um, so back to our question we need to find the time that it takes so I'm going to use um, in the y direction s is equal to ut plus half a t squared so um, that's going to be uh, my vertical distance which is going to be 6 um, and I'm just going to take all of this as positive so I'm going to use the downward direction as my um, as my positive direction so I'm going to use that to be positive so that's going to be 6 is equal to and um, my initial velocity is going to be this here so we're going to have uh, 8 sine 30.96 and I've worked that out to be 4.116 T um, and that's going to be plus a half times 9.8 um, so that's our acceleration and because I've taken this to be the positive direction I've used the positive here um, and that's going to be t squared um, so I'm just going to rearrange this we can spot that this is a quadratic so I'm going to have 4.9 t squared plus 4.116 t take away 6 is equal to 0 ok um, so I'm going to use the um, quadratic formula now uh, where a is going to be equal to 4.9 b is going to be equal to 4.116 c 
c is going to be equal to negative 6 and um, I usually work out my discriminant at this stage as well so I'm going to say that b squared take away 4ac um, and that's going to be equal to um, 134.54 Okay, so um, my quadratic formula will tell me that t is going to equal to is going to be equal to negative b plus or minus um, the square root of b squared minus four ac all over two a. So t is going to be equal to, and I'm going to use the plus first, so minus b, so that's minus 4.116 plus the square root of 134.54 all over 2a, which is going to be um, 9.8 Okay, um, so uh, we're putting that into my calculator. That tells me that t is going to be equal to 0 0.764 um, seconds. Okay, I'm also going to get another solution um, where I take this away. But I can spot already that I'm going to have a negative and I'm going to take away this number here. So that's going, and then when I divide it by 9.8, that's going to give me negative time and I'm not really interested in a negative time so I'm just going to use this as my solution 0 0.764 seconds okay um, so part C I'm just going to tidy up what I've done before I start part C okay in part C what we want to do is find the distance between the stone and the can when the stone hits the water so I'm going to start off by working out this distance here Okay, so we want to know how far the can is from the key. Um, I have no idea why that happened. Uh, I want to find out how far the can is from the, sorry, how far the stone is from the key um, when it's thrown and it hits the water. So what we need to remember here is that um, we've got constant um, speed um, horizontally. So that means that horizontally speed is equal to distance over time. Okay, so speed horizontally is equal to distance over time. Okay, and I'll just um, draw an arrow here to show that we're going horizontally here. Okay, so um, that means, well, I know my speed um, because that's going to be uh, 8 cos 30.96 that's going to be my horizontal speed and the distance is what I'm trying to find but I also know the time because the time is going to be 0 0.764 seconds so I can say that my distance is going to be equal to my speed multiplied by my time um, or my time multiplied by my speed. So I'm going to say 0 0.764 times by 8 cos 30.96 and that's going to be equal to um, 5.24 meters. So that's telling me this distance here is 5.24 meters. So I want to know the distance between the stone and the can. So I can say the distance from the can is going to be equal to, but it's going to be 10 take away 5.24. That gives me 4.76 meters. And there you go. I hope you managed to follow that. Thanks very much for joining me. I'll see you again soon. Take care.